After five seasons of Stranger Things, I finally realized the shape of the Demogorgon's face reminds me of something. A flower that grows from a succulent, the Stapelia. But its grotesque features also reminds me of another plant, Rafflesia. This parasitic flower looks like it's ready to bite you. Clearly this creature was inspired by real life flora. So what else did the Duffer brothers borrow from the plant kingdom? Well, Vecna came back with an improved look this season, didn't he? He doesn't look straight out of Whoville anymore. He's now Jim Carrey's Grinch with a strangler fig wrapped around him. This phenomenon of a strangler fig might be exactly what they were thinking. Deed lands high in a host tree, often dispersed by birds or bats. The fig then sends down roots toward the ground, wrapping around the host trunk as it grows. Then it starts competing for resources. Its leaves grow upward, shading the host tree's canopy, stealing its light. Its roots absorb water and nutrients from the soil, stealing its water. The roots thicken and fuse, creating a lattice that physically squeezes and constricts the host trunk. Over time, the host tree is starved of resources and physically crushed, eventually dying and rotting away leaving only the hollow lattice trunk of the strangler fig. Next up, let's talk about the meat flare. This, the physical manifestation of the mind flare made up of the residents of Hawkins. Interesting that Mrs. Driscoll craved plant fertilizer. The meat flare reminds me of crown gall growths. You ever seen these growths on the side of a tree? They're caused by a bacterial infection. Pretty gross. Agrobacterium enters the plant through wounds like pruning cuts or insect damage. The bacterium transfers a piece of its DNA, a plasmid, into the plant cell. This DNA instructs the plant cells to grow uncontrollably, forming a gall or tumor. The gall impedes water and nutrient uptake, weakening the plant. Infected plants can become stunted, produce poor fruit, or even die. This comparison isn't of an actual plant, but a fungus. Visually, the mind flare resembles black mold. Both appear as dark, matte masses with frayed smoke-like edges rather than solid outlines. Crucially, both are notoriously hard to eliminate. Scraping away visible mold doesn't remove the deep-rooted growth. In both cases, what you can see is only a fraction of the problem, and the real danger lies in the unseen network that allows it to return again and again. I've got another fungus comparison for you. There are these vines and tendrils all over the upside down, and they closely resemble fungal mycelium. Like mycelial networks, they form sprawling branching webs that spread in all directions, prioritizing coverage over structure. Their growth appears opportunistic and invasive, filling cracks, walls, and open space rather than following a predictable shape. This last one is a bit of a stretch, but with plants on the mind, how could the upside down bats remind me of anything other than the majestic bat plant? Tacus chantrieri. The upside down bats echo the eerie look of the bat plant flower with their dark wing-like silhouettes and spindly extensions that create the same unsettling outline. Now, just to revisit the Demogorgon comparison before you go, I have some more points that drive in the similarities. The Stapelia plant's flower isn't some innocent, goofy starfish-shaped flower. It's a corpse flower that emits a foul odor like rotting flesh to trick flies and beetles into pollinating it, sometimes even mimicking a dead animal's appearance with hairy patterned blooms. I could see flies coming to pollinate this guy's face. Rafflesia is also a corpse flower, but it has even creepier attributes. It completely relies on a host plant for all its water and nutrients. It lives hidden inside the host, only emerging as a giant foul-smelling flower to reproduce. Thanks for watching. And please check out this video where we hunt down the plants featured in Lego's Botanical Garden plant sets at Missouri Botanical Garden.